The eyes of the world were on Britain this weekend. 300 million pairs of them, in fact. A record. And once again, we pulled it off. Once again, we did it in spine-tingling fashion. Every boot was shining. Every jewel was glistening. There wasn't a foot or a feather out of place. The monarchy is the face that Britain shows to the world and to the thousands of servicemen and women, the countless volunteers and the legions of police who made it safe. We salute you for making us proud. The doom-mongers told us nobody really cares about the monarchy anymore. They might want to look away. Well, I was at Buckingham Palace on Saturday. It was absolutely magnificent. It made me proud to be British. If it didn't make you proud to be British, something wrong with you. Coronation weekend was a celebration of what this country does best, a millennium of history, stuffed with brilliantly bonkers traditions and rituals, effortlessly side by side, with a celebration of modern Britain and its dazzling and diverse best. But, of course, it wasn't for everybody. Yeah, Liverpool fans chose to boo and heckle the national anthem and have a load of offensive banners on a day when most of the country was celebrating it. We live in a free democracy. Ironically, that's part of what we were celebrating. They have the right to sour those celebrations in that manner, and I have the right to say I think they're pathetic. And I feel exactly the same way about the anti-monarchy protesters, 64 of whom were arrested, many of them preemptively. They have a right to demonstrate against the royal family, even if theirs is a minority view that I don't agree with. And there should be, in my view, an investigation into whether police overstepped the mark by arresting them. But at the same time, let's give the police credit for this. This was one of the biggest national security operations in living memory, and it followed two other enormous similar operations for the Platinum Jubilee and the Queen's funeral. And there were no events to mar it. Nothing went off that could have taken all the headlines away to negativity or worse. Credit to them for that. But have we really got to a place where people can't protest in that way? I'm not so sure I feel good about that. Now, if any cretinous protester had managed to bolt themselves to street furniture or spook horses on the parade or thrown things at the carriage, I'd be leading the charge saying that they were idiots wrecking a spectacle. But they didn't do that. And I'm not sure that they reached the bar required to be arrested in the way that they were. But for the most part, it was a magnificent couple of days, wasn't it? Prince William, I thought, spoke for the whole nation when he said this at the concert last night. Good evening, Your Majesties. Good evening, Windsor. As my grandmother said when she was crowned, coronations are a declaration of our hopes for the future. And I know she's up there, fondly keeping an eye on us, and she'll be a very proud mother. <laughs> pa, we are all so proud of you. I think we all felt the same pride uh, in our king and in his heir and in all the other royals who turned up and did their duty. Not so much the one who turned up for a few hours and skulked around and snarled and mumbled his way through an anthem he didn't want to sing and didn't want to really pay any tribute to his father or anybody else before getting back on his plane back to California. I'm not going to mention his name. I don't like to intrude in the private grief of somebody who just realised he's turned into Roger Irrelevant. At a time when so much about this country feels like it's not working, when we've had to endure so much through a cost of living crisis, a pandemic, a war raging in Europe, we managed to pull off another spectacular state event, the third in the space of a year, and they're all flawless. We've got plenty to be hopping mad about, but this weekend shows the monarchy is not one of them. 